Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium tonight to bring you a super cool arthropod. Tonight I'm going to be talking to you guys about Scolopendra heros castaniceps, also known as the giant red-headed centipede found in southern United States all the way down to northern Mexico, which is not a huge range, but good little chunk of land. This is a terrestrial carnivore that can grow to be about seven to eight inches. And most importantly, one of these animals was donated by the Garnand family, which has a funny story along with it. But we'll get to that in a few minutes. I also wanted to present a piece of mail that arrived to me at work from the Royal Air. And this was just a cute little fan letter sent to me by a student from across the pond. This is a young man named Lochran and he has written me letters before and we do correspond through email. And so this one says, to the deadly tarantula girl, it's been a while, it's Lochran again, the one who sent you the other letter and you gave me the shout out. I just wanted to let you know how the collection's growing. I now have a green bottle blue, Mexican red knee, and a Chilean rose. However, around Christmas, I'm getting either an OBT or a Goliath bird eater. Excellent choices. I will send you an email soon. Please email me when you receive this. And then he lists his email. He sent this wonderful little portrait of a very nice Brachypelma smithi, it appears. And so thank you, Lochran. I always love receiving your snail mail along with your emails. So this will be going up in my cabinet in my classroom until the end of the school year, which it will join my gallery of fan mail that I have up on my wall um, with uh, some decks and artwork and a few other little letters. So let's get talking about Scolopendra Heros Castaniceps. Two of my favorite centipede books are this one by Oren McMonagle, and he's super cool. I do some collecting for him so he can have some specimens to photograph for his book. And in Oren's opinion, these giant centipedes are the most massive, colorful, and impressive arthropods. So I totally agree with Oren. And then there's this guy. Mr. Carl Sandifer, who apparently I was, last time I was vending in Oklahoma City at an expo there, he was at that expo, but apparently too timid to come up and say hello. And actually I was waiting for you, Carl, so you could sign this copy of this book and the next time we're in the same room together, you better come over and say hello. But I love this book. It's really magnificent. It has some awesome information and you guys need to take a close look at that picture because that is actually a mother centipede brooding a little clutch of tiny little eggs which is very interesting because I did not know that centipedes did that before I read Carl's book so thank you for that Carl. Now let's take a look at a small specimen that was probably hatched out this year. This is a young specimen. I can tell that by the size. It is actually a myth that they gain segments as they grow up. Uh, they don't look like a roly-poly when they first hatch out. They look like a nice, long, beautiful centipede. This species was first described by Girard in 1853. They are a desert-dwelling carnivore. They are burrowers. They prefer a deeper substrate. And these animals feed on insects, small rodents, reptiles, and amphibians, although they are opportunistic feeders and will essentially eat whatever little small creature they can find. And they are not preyed upon by very many creatures. Centipedes do cannibalize in some cases, and they are eaten by scorpions in some circumstances, although more often they eat scorpions. And they are also eaten by bats, snakes, and other carnivorous mammals. Now let's take a look at a specimen that's probably around two years old. I can't say you for sure because I did not raise this animal. It was actually a specimen that was collected right on my property. So that was very fun. 
So you can see that this is a medium sized centipede. Um, maybe like as long as my hand, which is not very long. A cool thing about these is that they do shed their exoskeleton, which is actually called the cuticle. And similar to a tarantula, their exoskeleton or cuticle splits down the side and then they tend to first emerge from the front down to the rear. But unlike a tarantula, it actually only takes about an hour. And as you would imagine, they're very vulnerable after that process. They're very soft and they need some time to harden up. And so they should really not be tampered with or fed for about five days after a molt. A cool story about Carl Sandifer is that he is who I received my first large centipede from and it was a Vietnamese red leg, which I was super duper excited about. However, it was a baby and I didn't know very much about keeping centipedes at that time. And sadly, it did not live for a very long time. Although since then, of course, I've become schooled by authors and other keepers. One expert, Barney Tomberlin, who owned Hitari Invertebrate for forever and a day, who I used to collect and work for. And so what Barney told me is that they should actually be in a narrow, tall enclosure with a deep substrate with a mix of, I use vermiculite cocoa bedding sand, and then usually a little bit of moss or cork or some, some things like that on the top sometimes. And my centipedes are very, very, happy, they thrive, and they grow really, really fast. In fact, that tiny baby that I just showed you, I was a little bit bummed because it's like twice as big as it was when I found it like three or four weeks ago. And so obviously my centipedes do very, very well. And now the animal that is currently my prize centipede, donated by the Garnand family. This guy is a big, beefy bad bug. Here is the beautiful centipede that came from the Garnand family. And you can see that he is trying really hard to hide from us because I am a big, hideous, scary beast, which, you know, what can I say? I'm just big and ugly and scary. And he's a beautiful little creature. As you can see, this is a larger specimen nearing the seven to eight inch mark. This animal is definitely an adult and in the larger stage of its life. On this larger specimen, we can talk about centipede anatomy. So a centipede's body is made up of two different parts, the head, which is the cephalic plate, the orange part, along with the antenna and the eyes, and then everything below that, which is the trunk, which consists of 21 segments. The top part of the plates are called the tergites, and the underneath is called the sternites, which is very cool, and you can see all their beautiful little legs. Let's see if this guy is in the mood for a meal. It looks like these guys are kind of communicating. They're touching antenna and uh, the peed is cleaning its antenna. If you are a centipede aficionado and you would like to know if your centipede is a little boy or a little girl, it's not very easy to tell. They are not obviously sexually dimorphic. However, the females are typically larger and have a stouter body. And the males, if you know what you're looking at, have a flatter prefemur on the terminal leg, which forms a ridge on the inside of that leg. And so if you know your body parts and if you have multiple animals that you can compare, that may help you determine which ones are males and which ones are females. Another cool thing about this species is that they actually reproduce without copulating. They actually meet, 
kind of touch antennas. They do this little circular dance and then the males make a deposit and then the females pick up the deposit. However, if his antenna dance is not cool in her opinion, then she will probably eat his face. And that is a very bad day for a male centipede. So he must dance beautifully. And if he does, he'll become the father of many, many of her children. And if he doesn't, then he'll either have to escape or possibly just feed her a very nice dinner. The females usually lay about 30 to 60 eggs. In 23 to 31 days, she actually lays them in a clump and she uses this liquid to cover them so the eggs will not mold. And then she coils around them and she actually broods the eggs for all of that time, about a month. And each little tiny peed has a teensy little egg tooth that they use to slit through a very thin membrane, which to the lay person will actually look like a tiny baby centipede actually morphing out, but they are actually hatching out of an egg, which is what we are seeing in this picture right here, is that mother brooding or nesting over her little clump of eggs. Awesome, beautiful photograph, Carl. Well, I hope you enjoyed this up close and personal look at centipedes, specifically Scolopendro heros castaniceps, or the giant red-headed centipede. Uh, most people find these creatures quite terrifying. In fact, when I was uh, looking for some specific facts, I saw some crazy news article on one, which was just a photo of one on a broom in Texas, and there was this huge new story about how terrifying they are and how venomous and I thought hmm that's kind of silly anyway I'm here to debunk all the myths that centipedes should die and you should definitely chop their heads off or their pinchers or uh, that they need to be smashed and killed and obliterated because really they're actually cool for one beautiful for two and really excellent at pest control so don't kill the centipedes, let them live, and unless you're trying to give them a big high five, they're not going to usually come after you or do anything to envenomate you. So anyway, hope you guys like this one, and I will see you guys later.